Hey guys, Anthony 4 before diesel and suspension. Yeah, it's suspension at the moment. We're going to give you another tech tip because you deserve to know it. If you've got the Dobinson's monotubes in the front, that's these, you know, the black ones with the purple adjusting rings, and you've recently put some suspension in and you go, oh, I wanted it higher than that, or oh, I wanted it lower than that because you're a bit too fussy, a bit like what I am, then what you can do is you can actually adjust that spring seat, those purple rings there, but you cannot adjust them on the vehicle with the full weight of the spring. Well, actually, that word can, can't, a bit funny, actually, because there is people that have done that. There's people that have jacked the car up with it just like this, taking some of the weight off the spring. Depends what spring you've got in there and how much pressure's on there. Apparently, you can, because some people have done that. But I wouldn't recommend it, because Dobinson's, not me, but Dobinson's have had some um, returns where those rings down there, those purple rings, have stripped the threads, and it's because people try and turn them and adjust it. So what this is what we recommend and what we do if we need to adjust it. We're doing this video just for you to give you the info. Now, first thing you need to do, you've got limited space up here to this nut. I need the okay, light. light on. It always helps, doesn't it? Okay. So up here, you've got a 6 mil, right? Now, what we've got is a modified Allen key. 6 mil Allen key because you've got limited clearance to get in the top there because you need to be able to hold that and undo this nut. What I want to do while the vehicle's still on the ground, at the moment, we've taken it off the ground because I want this to compress and this rod to come down so I've got more clearance here because when it's on the ground, this is pushed up. The, the rubber on the bottom side behind here is compressed and this gives you less clearance here, right? So to get more clearance, vehicle off the ground, you know, start loosening this. Now, once you've got it loose, then the vehicle goes back on the ground because the weight of the vehicle presses here on the spring like it is any time it's on the ground. This isn't really doing anything, okay? It's just limiting your down travel. The weight of the vehicle right here is on the spring and on that spring seat down there. So what we want to do, because we're going to raise the vehicle and we reduce as much spring pressure on that seat down there as possible. So rather than just jack it up and have it go to full open length and still have a lot of spring pressure here on that seat, we want to take this bolt out, okay? We're going to take that nut off, but only on the ground. Otherwise, you're going to be undoing this with all the pressure of that shocker pulling down. It's going to get to the end and go, boom, and whack off and maybe rip the ends off the threads and so You don't want that. So you do this on the ground. Not these nuts, okay? This one, but only on the ground. Never do this any other time. Do not undo this nut when this is on the bench without a spring compressor, right? Dangerous. So don't even touch this. Disclaimer, dangerous. Don't even do it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're going to use this, we're going to loosen that, we're going to put it on the ground so the weight of the vehicle is holding the spring down, we're going to take this nut off. Then what we're going to do is raise the vehicle, take the wheel off, the bash plate and the sway bar. Catch you then when we get to that point. Okay, so we're going to take this nut all the way off, both sides. We're going to put it on the ground doing that. It's not That is not going to come off the end there. We're not going to turn this much, we're just cracking this loose now. Actually, as a matter of fact, we're actually even going to put it on the ground once we get this Allen key in there, so that we've got the spring, you know what I mean? We don't want anything pulling on this thread. You get my picture? I've explained it pretty well, right? Anyway, bang, we're gonna take that off with it on the ground. We're gonna raise the vehicle, we're gonna take the wheel off the bash plate, the sway bar, and we'll catch you there. More info, I just wanna show you. This is still off the ground at the moment, just to show you what I've done is, so we've got oh, this set of light, okay? Now, the Allen key's in there, but look what's happening. It's turning. So if you can turn this without worrying about the Allen key, then you go ahead and do that. But I'm just trying to cover bases because if you're not prepared, this whole center shaft could spin and uh, <clears throat> might not work out for you. Do you want to hit the green button, please, mate? Just till the uh, tire touches the ground for me, please. Tires on the ground, yeah? All right, drop it a bit more because we want the vehicle Look at that. We don't even actually need the Allen key in there. So there you go. So what we're going to do now is take the Allen key out and just use the spanner. I'm glad we covered that one. Don't cut your Allen key until you get at least, what, three, four minutes into the video because there could be information that you don't need to cut your Allen key. <laughs> okay, so the nut's off. Then we just take the washer off as well and just, and the rubber. See what I mean? The weight of the vehicle is compressing the spring. This is another way people for years of DIY installed suspension using the weight of the vehicle to compress the spring. But what happens now when we raise the vehicle, the spring can't go anywhere because it's on the shock absorber, right? So it's not dangerous or anything. As it decompresses, look, we'll, I'll try and video it actually happening if you like, so stick around. Um, 
But yeah, obviously he's just on doing the other side at the moment. And then we will slowly raise the vehicle and I'll show you what happens. Right, here we go, lights, camera, action. Both nuts off both sides. Up we go. Can you just quickly check the horses, the post is under properly while I do this. Shouldn't have moved, but let's just check and I'll continue to go. Yeah. And the funny thing is we've got spring bind anyway because the upper control arm's hitting on the edge of the spring. So it could, uh, let's just, I'm just gonna get and have a look and make sure. So you're gonna put a tiny little scratch on the spring, I'm not worried about that. But um, what about that side, mate? Did it come out or not? Or is the arm hitting the spring? It's hitting the spring. Yeah, yeah, same thing. So we didn't need to take the nut off all the way. So what we've learnt with this one is, and I suppose we're demonstrating all options. Um, you didn't need the Allen key with this one and you didn't need to take the nut off all the way. You could loosen the nut off to the end of the thread and uh, bada bing. But look, we'll continue with what we're doing and uh, try and demonstrate and see how much spring press is left on those uh, seats. We are going up, raising the vehicle. Okay, so we're raising it up now, as you can hear. And what I just wanted to explain was, right, we've just set the rubber on, the washer back on and the nut. I can just, just almost feel the end of the nut. So what you can do if you're doing this, it depends the position of where your springs are, how far your arm's gonna go and where it's gonna hit. I could probably bang that spring there and that might even pop past it and that sort of thing. You can still get it back. I'm just gonna scratch your spring. I'm not too worried about the springs, you know, good from far. Far from good type thing, you know, they're not furniture, they're springs in a four wheel drive. They're going to get dirty, muddy, rusty and all that sort of stuff. Springs are for life, uh, a few scratches won't hurt it. But the point is, we've gone to the end, so it's allowed all that extra travel. So there should be a lot less spring loading on this uh, spring. We'll have a look at it when we get down that end. So we're raising it up now. So the wheels are about to come off, these wheels are coming off. The bash plate will come off and the sway bar will come off to allow access. All right, so here we are, we've got the uh, sway bar off. You can see the bash plate's off. The sway bar's off, so we've got access in here with the spanners because the sway bar is normally in the way here. Now what we need to do, when we set up the suspension, the standard height for a Prado is from the center of this hole for the bolt to the, lower, the, the lowest point of the top of the spring seat there is 213 millimeters. Now, this vehicle hasn't got a bull bar. We put 350 springs in, which are heavier, and we've never done this before, and we thought, We've you've done other vehicles with these springs with the standard height and with a steel bull bar, they sit quite high, 790, even higher thereabouts. So we went, well, the weight of a bull bar has got to be, you know, going to drop at 20 mil. So we thought we'll drop the spring seat 10 mil. Plus Anthony locks it a little bit lower. So we went another three mil and we, so we went 200 on the dot, right? And we, we started off thinking drop it only five mil, which would have been 208. And we ummed and ahed and we talked about it and we compared all these vehicles we've done and all these things. And guess what? We went 200, so we took off 13, which dropped at 26, but without the bull bar, which you would have thought it's going to end up maybe six mil lower than the 790. But anyway, no, we ended up around 770 or lower. So to be quite honest, we should have set it up at 208. So if you haven't got a bull bar and you want to put these heavier 350 springs in, that's fine. I actually like it so far, but limited use. There'll be more videos, so subscribe, turn the bell on. But um, we're unable to measure and set up the 208 from the center of this to the spring seat with any sort of accuracy while it's in the vehicle. So what we do is we'll take a measurement from, for example, see that machined edge there, right? So let's just, I'm being very rough at the moment to give you an example, right? Ruler to there, we're gonna go, okay, that's 55. I'm gonna be more exact about it. Probably is 55 actually. It is actually, I'm looking at it, going bang on 55, I reckon. We're gonna do the same at this side and it'll probably be the same because we did the same setup. Ruler's flat at the top. What do we got there? Maybe 50, oh no, that's right, we dropped. What do we do? We dropped the other one because the spring was about three or four mil longer, so we dropped the seat a millimeter. So that's why. So we're gonna allow for that. This is 56. Anyway, we're gonna do accurate measurements. And what we're gonna do, we need to raise it eight millimeters. So we're gonna have 56 plus eight equals 64, whatever it was, yeah, something like that. 55 plus eight equals 63. And once we got that set right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna make sure we're turning it the right way. This bottom one, we're gonna turn it to come down to release any pressure between the two together. We're not gonna try and turn the top one, no. The lock nut, we need to turn it so it comes down. So look at the thread, make sure you turn it the right way, otherwise you'll wreck your threads and you'll be in all sorts of trouble, right? Now, I haven't done this myself before because I don't actually install suspension, do the adjustments, whatever. This is the procedure I know 
to do it because it's obvious and it makes sense. But I know other people, a number of people that have done it this way, even without releasing that. But I like to release as much pressure as possible, as you can see, off this seat to put less pressure on these threads because I know about the warranty claims on these threads, okay? Not many, but it does happen to the point that Dobbinson's didn't want to include any of the spanners that come with, they want to send them out and that's it. They set it and you forget it. Well, guess what? All my kits, I say, please include the spanners, but I'm also including the information. I ask you to watch all the videos in the suspension playlist to get yourself informed before you buy, decide what suspension you want or not, if you're gonna to come to me. If you're not gonna to come to me, do whatever you want. It's all good, it doesn't matter, right? And all the best with that. It'll probably work out okay, but it doesn't always. Um, so look, that's what we're gonna do. You know what we're doing? We're taking the measurement, we're gonna adjust that. Once we get this one down, the bottom one down out of the way, we'll adjust the height with the top one, allowing for the bottom one. So we'll take a measure, I think it's 12 mil or something from memory, something like that. And anyway, we'll screw that up and we'll take the final measurement. And when we're happy, we'll just give it a light lock up and we'll uh, put it all back together, reverse order, sway bar back on, blah, 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 do up the top nut and uh, we'll let you know what the height ended up being with a 350 spring set at, it'll be like the setting of 208. So like dropping it five mil from standard. Okay, so quite easily, I released the locking ring and now one handed with the spanner, the standard spanner while videoing, I'm going to show you. Right. It's not actually that hard at all. Right. Not a big deal. And it's obviously that spring's compressing, it's going upwards. So the further you want to go, the harder it's going to get. This is what we're going to do till we get to 63. Yep to the bottom once we put that ring up 63. Now another important bit of info, so that's that one done. We've set the height at 63. 63 was set in with it. 63 right in the middle. Just know that this bottom here, it's tapered here. It curves, you've got to be right in the middle there and the rule's got to be flat. So you've got to be really accurate here. If you're going to do it, do it properly is our motto. Um, but the other thing, what was I going to say? The other thing to think about. Um, okay, so when we install these on the spring compressor, these we don't do up too tightly against each other because the spring pushes really hard against it and makes them even tighter. But what we've got to think, it's opposite. When it's on the vehicle, the spring is already pushing against this, right? So we need to tighten that one up to this one as firm as we can by hand, basically. Without being stupid, we have to give it a fair push to make sure it's locked. And a good test would be when you service your vehicle. So do the 500K check and the 1000K check Look underneath your vehicle to make sure this one hasn't come loose and moved down. And then every time you service your vehicle, have a look at them. It's not going to be the end of the world. It's my belief that if this came loose and went down there, this isn't going to move anyway because of the spring pressure on it. Bada bar, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, and all of that. All right, here we are, all done. They're in there, the 350s with the seat height setting would be at 208 millimeters. And the measurement we've got from the bottom, the way we measure. Look, middle is not accurate because you're sort of estimating well, about, around about there where the middle is. There's no center line. The bottom of the rim is more accurate because bang, bottom of the rim, seven inch wheels is most common. Directly lines straight up to the edge of the guard. And we've got, depends where you park it on what concrete. You've got to be pretty accurate to get the right reading. But on our concrete in a few different places, a few average readings, you're looking around about 785 to 790, which is 790 is ideal for the front of a Prado in my opinion. And, um, you know, I was happy with a little bit less. So let's see where this settles in. We've got the 350 coils in the front. It's very comfortable. With the 350 coils and the 329s in the rear, it's high at the rear. It's ready for a load. That's what we want. But it is noticeably reduced how much body roll the vehicle has, right? There's quite a lot less body roll having those stiffer springs, and it's still a very comfortable ride. Anyway, that's my conclusion. That's a video. Hope this information has been helpful for you. And like I said, subscribe, turn the bell on. If you want suspension information, check out that suspension information playlist. There's heaps of videos in there and more to go in there yet. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.